you know the Satma Rebbe? You know Satma Rebbe had Nebuch. If you agree with his shit with his philosophy or not, it doesn't matter. From the day of his Bar Mitzvah, he only slept in a bed on Friday night on Yom Tov. He never slept in a bed. And you know how important it is for the feet sometimes to be like, I don't know, his judge or the doctor. For the feet, it's very important not always to be down. So the Satna Rebbe had awesome swollen feet, Gefeller. And uh, the doctor forbid him to dance on Simchus Torah, you know. I remember it was one time I had the privilege of being there, Shemin And there were four doctors standing in the corner because they saw Mamish Gat, something is happening. And the Heilige Satna Rebbe danced for six hours. You know, in Satna, like in Bobov, only the Rebbe dances, not the Chesidim, in Kofus. So there were thousands of people. This is long line. Satna went back and forth. I see him running back and forth. He was flying. Or in Bobov, you know, Mamish. Awesome, right? He didn't sleep, right? So what did he do after Hakofis? The doctor was begging him he should lie down. So he lied down and then he asked, is the doctor gone? To him, yeah, he left. <laughs> so he got up right away and he learned all night. So you hear, friends, I want you to do something very, very deep. When you're sad, you are tasting a little bit more death when you sleep. When you're filled with joy, it's a different kind of sleeping, right? I don't know if you know that, that the Koyanim would not only wash their hands, would Mamash go to the mikvah when they went to the bathroom. So, you know, only when they did like here, yeah, don't want to sound a bigger thing. Do you know the only one who <laughs> kept it up? You know, the only one who kept it up is the Helige Satna Hope, you know? Mamish, awesome. <laughs> well, not the Satna today, the one who passed away. You know, I'm, I'm really, you know, some of us don't know, you know, we hear, we hear of the Satma Rebbe, we think that the Rebbe, we think that the Satma Rebbe was a big fanatic, and he must have been a terrible person, you know. I want you to know that the biggest Balstoker of the last generation was Satmara. Mamish, the biggest Balstoker. Awesome. You know, Mamish, he blessed a few Yidin of his Chesidim who went to Tagus of St. Paolo, and the Yid Moskowitz, a billionaire, and the, he gave the Satmara a, a checkbook, and he says, any amount in the world, I'll cover it. And here I want you to know something. Also very important. The Satma Rebbe was a big canoe, right? But this is only officially. When it came between him and other person, Mama she loved every heat. And this is a story I heard from someone who knows this person. One of the biggest top non-religious Chiloni Zionists in Israel. Remember, all our children should be well. This child got very sick. And he mamish needed the next he came to New York and he needed twenty thousand dollars the next morning for the operation. And the operation had to take place because God forbid if if it's the day after it's too late. He comes to New York, you know, all the big Zionists, you know, they're not so fast and coming out is twenty thousand dollars. So someone says to him, the only person who will give it to you on the spot, Satmara. He says, I'm afraid I'll go to Satna, they'll knock me off, who knows what they're doing to me, they find out my name. People tell them, there is nobody else to go to. Comes to Satma Rebbe, and Satma Rebbe Mamish, he, he knew who he was. Satma Rebbe greeted him with so much sweetness. Unbelievable. He says to my, my child is sick. Satma Rebbe says, how much do you need? 20,000. Say to the governor, give me, give me the check, give it to him right away. Without saying a word. But, what I want to share with you. Sadly enough, you know, 
fair enough, you know, a lot of Sad Maxim in Brooklyn are not real the highest Sad Maxim. It's never what was left over in the camps when we go out. I want you to know there is a group of Sad Maxim in Uruguay. Uruguay in South America is the sea talk of Satna, but they all are millionaires. How much millionaires? Okay, I'm arriving in Uruguay. I'm arriving at night. It was Monday night, and Tuesday night is my concert. I'm arriving, and then I said to the youth, picked up from the airport, tomorrow's her Schrodisch. Um, so he says, okay, you know, for you, you want to have a mikvah and everything goes to Sassan Bismarck. I don't have a black hat. So good. I'm coming Sassan Bismarck, and suddenly when I got there, I realized I didn't change my money yet to Uruguay money. And the uh, taxi driver doesn't speak English. I just gave him the piece of paper with the address. And he wants, he doesn't even know what to do with that about I'm going to Bismarck. And I say, Yidin, you know, I just came from New York and they don't have Uruguay money on me and I have this taxi outside so I could change my American money, you know. I'm telling you, I mamish counted. Fourteen people went out. Mamish tried to get in front of each other to have the mitzvah of paying my taxi. <laughs> mamish. I'm going to the mikvah, I come out and then the president of the shul comes up to me. Says, "I want to talk to you private. This is unbelievable." He takes me out on the street and takes me for the walk. He says, "I don't know who you are, and you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. I just want to tell you one thing. I don't know what brings you to Uruguay. If it is because you have no permission, I'll give you permission." If you have a wife and children, I'll give you money for the ticket to bring them here. Do you believe? Do you believe? He says, I, I don't know who you are, and if you don't want to tell me, you don't have to tell me. He says, maybe I came to Uruguay because I'm running away from something. Like that. I couldn't believe it. Then I said, I can tell you, I'm, my name is Shlomo Kalbach. Shlomo? <laughs> Have all your cassettes? <laughs> <laughs> but this is not the important part. The important part is the mamish stuck. You know what stuck is? He didn't say to me, here you have hundred dollars. He said, you need Pondosa? I'll give you Pondosa. Mm. Put you on your feet, right? You have a wife and children? I'll bring them here. So the highest stoker is not to give one a dollar. The highest stoker in the world is to put them back on their feet. They should be self-sufficient. 